Thank you again for checking in. I have um, something exciting, or at least exciting to me, um, to share with you. I have recently become uh, fascinated with uh, a, a, a attraction that was at Disneyland that was actually tore down three years before I was born. Um, and it was called the Monsanto House of the Future, and it was in Tomorrowland. Um, but before we get too far down that path, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Monsanto. Forgive me, I made a couple of notes so I didn't get myself confused. But the Monsanto Company, uh, which was a chemical and agricultural company, was founded in 1901 in Missouri. But the reality is they're probably best known for a, a, a chemical they created called Roundup in the mid to late 70s. We're all familiar with that weed killer and have used that weed killer. I have, I'm sure you have. Um, some of their darker inventions, and it wasn't just them, there were other chemical companies at this time too, uh, that they're probably more infamous for than famous for would be Agent Orange, DDT, uh, all the PCBs that were invented, uh, and, and all of those were banned or made illegal in 1979 with the to Toxic Substance Control Act. Most of that stuff is all long gone. And, and, and Monsanto, the company itself in 2016 was actually acquired uh, by the German company, uh, German chemical company Bayer for $66 billion in cash, 66 billion. And yes, the Bayer company I'm talking about is the same company that produces Bayer aspirin. They are German, they're not an American company. Crack a book. But anyway, uh, getting sort of back to Monsanto, a couple of other things that, that they're known for, maybe less famous, but in, have intrigued me and I hope I intrigue you, uh, involve Disneyland. In 1955, when Disneyland opened, Monsanto uh, um, was the sponsor of an attraction at uh, Tomorrowland called the Hall of uh, Chemicals or the Hall of Chemistry. I can't remember at the moment. Uh, but it was walk-through attraction, and they, they were one of the companies that sponsored, which was something that Mr. Disney was famous for, getting other people to pay for the attractions. Now, the, the Hall of Chemicals uh, basically closed in 1966, and in 1967, it became Adventure Through Interspace, where you rode um, the newly uh, sort of track system, similar to the, very similar to the Haunted Mansion, where your, your little carriage was on a, a big track and, and took you through the attraction. If memory serves, the adventures through inner space, they actually shrunk you down through a, a microscope and you, uh, as, as you went through the ride. That ran from 67 to 87, and the adventure through inner space was replaced, of course, uh, by Star Tours, which is still there today in Tomorrowland. Um, but, but during that time period, um, that's just when the, the House of the Future, Monsanto House of the Future, came to be. It was actually 1957. But um, imagine, go back to like 1953. Plastics are, are just becoming something. We're all used to it today, but they were relatively new in, in the early 50s. Uh, uh, siding for homes, uh, plastics in your car. Plastics in the in, in inside your house. Um, again, uh, you know, uh, vinyl siding, um, insulation for extension cords. Uh, you know, things of that nature. Outlets. The, the uses for plastic every day seem to be doubling. Now, Monsanto had a plastic division, and they certainly didn't want to miss this boat, this revolution that was happening with plastics. They wanted to make some money. Well, so they contacted these cats at MIT. That's the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Got those engineers involved, and they sort of created what today what we would call a think tank on, on what else could they do with plastic. Well, some of the guys from Monsanto and some of the guys from MIT actually even sort of veered off of that think tank, and they eventually literally, literally built uh, an entire house or had the concept of an entire house being built out of plastic, not just the the dishes and the drawers and stuff, but the, the, the structure itself. Well, Monsanto loved the idea and uh, they pitched it, you know, to Walt Disney, mostly because I think they probably had a good relationship from the, the, Hall, of, uh, the Hall of Chemicals in 1955. So they roll along and I'm gonna say 1956, early 57, and say, hey, what do you think about us putting this home of the future 
in Tomorrowland. Now, you know, Disney's uh, a futurist at heart, certainly, but he's also a man that recognizes he's got to have new and exciting attractions if this park is going to be a success. So he agrees to it. And when you think about it, you, you're, he must have loved the house, I would think, because it, 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 com it would combine his futuristic vision as a futurist. You can put it in a, in a land that, that's, its entire purpose is to talk about tomorrow and the future. And what better place to put a house of the future than in the land of the future? So the house itself, it opened in, in June of 1957. It closed in December of 1967. And during that time period, 20 million visitors actually came through uh, the house. Now, just watch, I'm gonna, the next, there's, I've got a, it's, it's seven or eight minutes, it's worth watching the promotional video of the house itself and some other images uh, of the Monsanto House of the Future. Watch this and then watch this space and then, then come back and I've got a couple more things to share with you. Go ahead, watch this space. Monsanto House of the Future stands in Tomorrowland. An exciting, dramatic exterior. But would people really be interested in it? Here's just a part of the answer. Five to 10,000 people a day who wanted to get an idea of what a home in the future might be.
but I like it. What a dream. Imagine how wonderful it would be to live in a house like this. Just imagine. I'd be getting dinner in this kitchen. And what a kitchen. If you want more light, press a button. Any intensity of light through polarized plastic ceiling panels. Soft light, shadowless light. A dishwasher, of course. But this one, unlike any other. Washing is by ultrasonic waves. And the dishwasher is also the storage place for dishes. Plastic dishes, of course. Yes, living here could be fun, even to setting the table. What's happening here? In an ordinary house, we'd be talking about the refrigerator and freezer. But in this house of the future, we call them cold zones. Three of them, each lowered to handy position at the touch of a button. One zone for regular refrigeration, one for frozen, and one for irradiated food. Design and science combine for the utmost in convenience and food preservation. Shells, too, are of plastic and are lowered electrically from the overhead cabinets. A place for everything and at your fingertips. Yes, this kitchen almost gets dinner itself, but that wouldn't really be fun. The fun is making the most of the ultimate in kitchen convenience and efficiency. A dream of the future brought to reality by Monsanto. How do we cook? The range is different, too. A microwave range that rises out of the counter. Various foods can be cooked here at the same time, and yet, everything done just right at amazing speed. And while we're on the subject of the very unusual, here's a complete climate control operated by this panel in the kitchen. Heat, air conditioning, ventilation, and even the scent of roses or a salty sea air can be directed individually to every room. Unusual, too, are the floors. A vinyl plastic with a plastic foam underlay that clean in a jiffy, tough, yet beautiful. Is everything of plastic? Almost. Dishes, cups, countertops, walls, floors, ceiling, tabletops, shelves, and cabinets. Plastics in all their colorful, functional, and beautiful versatility have transformed a work area, have stepped it years ahead. No need to guess whose room this is. That's right, for the young man of the house. Here's the answer to the continuous activity of the younger set. Tough, durable material, easily washable. Floors, walls, shelving, and furniture, plastic, in combination with plywood, fiberglass and other materials. Even the fabrics on furniture are of man-made fiber. And for the young lady of the house, just look around. which even seems fantastic for a dream of the future. A laboratory at one end, melamine surface and a telephone system which challenges the imagination. Push buttons instead of dial and no handset to disturb my lady's dressing. Just talk and listen. For the relaxation, a living room that is part of the character of everything we have seen. A feeling of space, of smooth, restful areas for living and resting. With your favorite stereophonic recordings on built-in high-fidelity equipment. The 
bathroom for the youngsters is also futuristic. A laboratory that adjusts to height. No stretching or bending. For the grown-ups, another bathroom, completely molded in two pieces, with features that seem pure fantasy. Built-in electric razor and electric toothbrush. And here is something we'd all like to have. The same push-button phone we saw on the dressing table, but with the added attraction of a closed-circuit television receiver. The picture on the screen? Oh, that's of whoever is standing at your front door. You see him, but he doesn't see you. And you can give him any message you want over the two-way communication system. Adjustable, shadowless ceiling lighting, of course, with panelescent panels for night light. The bathroom of the future in the house of the future. The versatility of plastics comes sharply to the front in the master bedroom. Fabrics and furniture of materials unheard of a short time ago. Practical but comfortable. Serviceable yet beautiful. laminated safety glass. Functional, beautiful, another dream of the future in the house of tomorrow. Oh, it would be wonderful. Or maybe someday. Yes, this whole thing, the house itself, the furnishings in it, offer a challenging new experience to stimulate your imagination toward newer and better ways of building, furnishing, and using our living space. An idea of what can happen when you take the rats. An idea of some of the elements that undoubtedly you will find when it comes your turn to build your house of the future. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that cool and fun? So. Again, the house is long gone, sort of, but I actually have managed to acquire. I don't know if when you walk into the house, you, you got a, a, a brochure or a pamphlet that talked about the house of the future. It unfolds here. These are some people cheering for it, but it gave you a little simple little floor plan. And then it, then it unfolded. I have, I have two of them and kind of gave you a, 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 a you know, I don't know what you call this, just a description of the home itself. You know, the, the erection, the plastics, the achievement. I, this, this stuff just fascinates me. I have two of these. And then, uh, oh, look, here's kind of the, the logo, very 60s, very modern, uh, an era that I love to death. Um, and then I also managed to acquire, well, a postcard. That's not, that's really not that hard to get. Here's a postcard. But, uh, a ticket that allowed you, once you visited the house, they'd give you this ticket, and that got you into the Adventure of Inner Space ride for free. Pretty cool. Anyway, and uh, you, you may have seen it, that the, the foundation itself actually still exists. Uh, it's in an area that's now known as Pixie Hollow, where you meet Tinkerbell and, I suppose, other guests. It's been painted green, and it's got some don't look at me kind of material on it, but, but I'm gonna end here with a couple of pictures of the foundation. So it's sort of an Easter egg um, for those that know. And I think that's super cool. And I, it, it's, I think it's awesome that there's still a small part of it there. But anyway, I don't know. For some reason, I just get excited about this house and it's very interesting to me. If you watch the video, you could see there's a few things there that actually do exist today, like that flat screen TV, uh, the phone with the, the video, the closed caption, you know, none, or, or the climate control. That didn't exist until just recently. The idea that we can control our climate from, from a phone and our homes and stuff today, uh, you know, that was far-fetched in 1957. That's madness then. Today, we all have it. It's amazing. Anyway, I hope you got a kick out of this video. I had a blast making it. 
Um, I hope it sparks a little interest and you'll dig a little deeper into the house of tomorrow. Um, anyway, take care. As always in this world, when you could be anything you want, you be kind, you be humble, and you be forgiving. See you later. So it's hard to see, but that is the foundation of the old Monsanto house from the early 60s, the house of the future. That's all that's left of it.